My name is Sister Tendai Makonese. We begin by greeting Mary using the same words that the angel Gabriel used. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. <laughs> In her fiat, her, let it be done to me according to your word, which is her great and total yes. Mary is a great example to us all. Throughout her life, she lives up to this fiat, right up to Calvary and to Easter. Mary becomes for us the model disciple, showing us how to follow Jesus, her son. Catholics have also had another practice of consecrating themselves to Mary. And the present Pope has his theme, totally yours, and that's with reference to Mary. How does that relate to a relationship with Jesus Christ? In the Catholic faith, we believe in God, Father Almighty, in His Son, in the Holy Spirit, the existence of angels and saints, and included in the saints is the Virgin Mother Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. For me, uh, the Virgin Mary, I take her as a model in two ways. The first one being the model in faith. The faith she had, she had in believing just the word of God. For me, I take um, that is being my model because I also believe in the word of God just like the way she believed when she received the good news that she was to be the mother of God and young as she was at that age she really believed in that and also when it comes to me in my faith I want to believe in even in the things that seem impossible in my life I believe the word of God remains faithful the word of God will always be fulfilled the second way she is a model to me is um, in, being, in um, being a mother, motherhood. Looking at her, believing that she was going to give birth to our Lord Jesus Christ, and the way she was looking after the child. It is very interesting when you look at the word Marist. The first three letters, they come from the name of our Lady Mary, and the last three from Christ who is our Lord. So Marist, and then if you look at Mary, you end up being in Christ. So there is no way in which you can separate Our Lady from her son who is Jesus Christ. So they are always together. And you may want to know why is it that as Marist brothers, we have got a special devotion to Our Lady as a male congregation. It has got a history. It was in France when our founder sent Marcel in Champagne, when he was young, he went to the seminary. When he was at the seminary there, he did not do very well. So much that the rector there chased him. So he went back home and he told his mother what had happened. So his mother took him to Our Lady of Fouvier, which is in France, to pray to Our Lady to help him in his studies. After a while, he applied to rejoin the seminary, which they allowed him to do so. So when he went back, he continued his devotion with Our Lady. When he also founded then the Marist brothers, he had a special devotion to Our Lady. Often when he would visit the brothers, he would be caught in the snow, and he would pray the memorari. Like one time, he was visiting one brother, 
then he was caught in the snow. He could not see where he was going. But after saying that prayer to Our Lady, from nowhere, somebody appeared with a light from the barn, so he could see where he was going at that particular time. So all the time for Muslim in Champagne, Our Lady is very important and was very important. It's still important to ask the Maris brothers here in Zimbabwe and throughout the world. We call Our Lady our ordinary source. Because whatever we do, it is from here. So Marcelin, when he founded the congregation, he entrusted the congregation to Our Lady. Because he said, ourselves without Our Lady, we are like a lamps without oil. So all the time we need Our Lady to guide us in our lives. That's why also we take what we call the three Maria virtues. Simplicity, modesty, and humility. Those should be the characteristics of the Marist brothers. So we take it from our lady. Mary is a model. Mary is the first evangelizer. She obeyed her son totally unto the cross. She was there at Pentecost. So she's the perfect example of one who follows Jesus. And she also said, your will be done. So when, I, when we talk to Mary, I'm reflecting upon a lifestyle as my model so that I take a lifestyle and practically put my lifestyle in pattern to hers because she's a model, she, she shows me how to follow Christ. So when I say totally yours to Mary, I'm saying because you so loved Christ, you followed her, you were his mother, I'm going to be like you. For many people, prayer means speaking to God and especially speaking to God with all my uh, requests and my needs. When we look at Mary, she teaches us a new way of relating to God. She is the listening one. She ponders, she reflects, and all her life is open before God. We see that especially in the events surrounding the birth of Jesus. Again and again, after the visit of the shepherds, for example, she is pondering things in her heart. Meaning that she brings her whole life before God. She ponders her life before God. And all what she does comes out of that deep connection, that deep union with God. Later on, Jesus is growing up she takes him, together with Joseph, to the temple in Jerusalem. One of the obvious sufferings is when she goes the second time to the temple. And when on the way back from the temple, where Jesus had been going with them because he would now come of age, according to the tradition, was apparently lost. teenage son, in a sense, lost. What sorrow. And when she and Joseph finally find him, they discover that he says he's got a special identity, a special calling. He's got to be in his father's house. He, in a sense, announces that he has got a special mission. He is a person that has got his own call. And so, neither of them understand, neither Joseph nor Mary. But St. Luke tells us that Mary pondered all these things in her heart. There are so many things that we sometimes don't understand in our lives. But what else except ponder them in our hearts, leave them with God, who is, after all, the one who loves us, no matter what the circumstances. St. Matthew tells us another story. He tells us about the killing of the innocents. And these days, don't we see how many innocent children are being killed? A terrible event. And in order to save her child, Mary and Joseph have to flee. 
They have the experience that any family has, any refugee family that needs to flee from a country. They went to Egypt. And I must admit that it's only when I visited Egypt that I became really aware of how rough it must have been, how tedious, how lengthy the journey, how difficult the circumstances. Mary, the pilgrim woman, like all of us, the pilgrim people, on our way to God. And all those sufferings that these days the many refugees in Africa and throughout the world experience, they can know that there is a woman, a privileged woman even, who was the mother of God, who experienced the same kind of suffering. And may they gain inner strength from this, that Mary has been able to endure it. And in a sense, as one would hope for them, she and her family, she and the child were repatriated. One would hope and one would pray and ask Mary to intercede that they too may find their way back home. Mary is a model of one who listens to the Holy Spirit. And St. Paul tells us that sometimes we we fail to pray properly because we don't know how and we need the Holy Spirit. So we go through Mary who is the model of listening to the Holy Spirit to help us to intercede for us just as, he did, as she did when she listened to the Holy Spirit and managed to bring forth Christ into the world. She is the woman chosen by God without any resistance to God's initiative. She is truly open. And that openness of Mary makes her so attractive to us. We can even say that wherever Mary is, she attracts the Holy Spirit coming down upon her and all those close to her. Mother Mary is one of the figures that I treasure most in my life. She's inspired me. First of all, when I look at how she responded to God's call to be the mother of Christ, I really feel she's somebody who had faith in God. Of course, there were some consequences after she, she had said yes to that call. But still, she, because of her faith in God, in God who is all-powerful, who knows everything, she managed to bear the child Jesus in her womb for the salvation of us all. She wasn't really self-centered. But she thought of the whole humanity because she wanted us all to be reconciled to God once again after the fall. So for me, when I look at her faith and my being a religious sister, I feel somehow inspired to continue responding to God's call in a more productive way, especially when I meet and work with his people to be a portrait of Christ before everybody so that we draw each other closer to God. Kwa mai Maria uropa irovere wa mamboedu jeso kisepa mchinjiko Nguwa nengu waka nandoda kunesikana nevana kumarara mirangu Kutaura kwa waka ita mai Maria zuya zwa oma waka ngoti Ngashu itukwa kwa ndiri seguda kwenyu Mamboe wangu Ngashu itukwa kwa ndiri seguda kwenyu Zunu ngoti nguwa nengu andinova ita semu chere chezo mkurarama kwa ngu Semu fana nizo semu Ningangote an example, Mukurama Makwangu, Tikana Jaoma, no, it's Shungaiti, where I need Gazi to go and did so good a queen. Munuya knows in Pisama Maria, I know she surpassed Paman Puduja. So, I believe Mary is a role model of somebody who, who loved Christ, somebody who loved God, somebody who obeyed God. So, I believe as Christians, if we are to love God the way that Mary loved God. We can only pray in the Holy Spirit. The teaching of St. Paul was quoted. And the Holy Spirit is not just given to individuals. The Holy Spirit is primarily given to the whole church. And whenever we pray, we pray in and through the church, as members of the church. You see, we say, our Father. We don't say, my Father. Jesus taught us to pray as 
the members of a community, of a family, of the church. Because that's where the Holy Spirit is. And Mary is the model of the church. Mary represents the church. If you want to know what the church is, we look at Mary. She is the one, she is the expert in, and champion in receiving the Holy Spirit. Nobody else can has done that so well as she has done. And so if you really want to pray, we must be somewhat like Mary. A famous theologian of the last century, Hans Urs von Walthaler, said that we, all of us, whether we are men or women, we all have to have a Marian spirit, a Marian attitude in receiving the Holy Spirit and responding to the Holy Spirit. And what is prayer but responding to the Holy Spirit? models of faith say Maria, Maria portrait of a, of a disciple. Uh, when you go back to the scriptures, you find that, uh, for example, at the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel announces to Mary about the, about the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ, if Mary is ready to accept to be the mother of Jesus. As she ponders on the word, and then at the end of the day, she accepts. She says, let it be done to me in accordance with your will. So here, if one goes deep into this answer, uh, one can learn a lot about, about what a disciple should be, a person who is ready to listen to the word of God and to respond positively. <laughs> Pakava, <laughs> She believed strongly. I'll compare Mary with Zechariah. Zechariah got the same message from the angel. He questioned. He was struck down. Mary questioned, but she questioned with faith. She didn't doubt that God could do what he said he was going to do. The church as bride of Christ is a metaphor, is an image. This image becomes a reality in the person of Mary, Virgin and Mother Mary of Jesus, Mother of God. And there is now a parallel between the church and Mary. What we can say about the church, we can say also about Mary. She is the personification of the church. What is church said about the church in general can be said about Mary in particular. What we can say about the one, what we can say about the one, we can say also about the other. If you want to know what, or rather who, 
the church is we need to look at Mary. She is the personification of the church. She is the church in person. She is the model of the church. You cannot really love Jesus. Follow him without having to reflect on this word made flesh, how it, it came amongst us. It came through this instrument, this favorite instrument, this humble instrument that is Mary herself. And I think Mary is also our model of faith. If we read when she said yes to the angel, she lived that yes. We should always look up to her for inspiration. We also make our yes as believers to follow Christ, to do the will of God. In the words of Jesus, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and those who do the will of God. And Mary is a perfect example of someone who, who did the will of God in her life. So she remains a model for all of us. In that way, we have to honor her. So I will say it really as I say, I repeat again, Mary is a special role to play in our salvation history. And we cannot love Jesus and they ignore her mother. She is a little bit too big. I think for me, a mistake. We will be missing something rich there that God has presented to us. And I think Mary is a perfect example of something that God has presented to us. And I think we have to honor in a special way. Jesus says, who is my mother? It is he who hears the word of God and keeps it. 
Yeah.